patient here today for a neurotoxin treatment. Today we're going to be using Dysport. It's one of the neurotoxins made by Galderma. Kara is a long-term patient and has had this treatment before, and so we kind of know her uh, individual plan and what works well for her. She likes to maintain a little bit of movement in the frontalis to get the brow lift. Kara really loves when her brows lift up from her uh, neurotoxin treatment, so we keep it a little bit lighter in the frontalis uh, and then dose a, a pretty typical dose in her glabellar region and in the lateral canthal rides. So as you guys can see here, we have our markings in place. So Kara, could you go ahead and squint for me? Okay, and as you see, uh, when Kara makes his face and squints, we can see the borders really well defined here, actually, of her corrugator. And then we see right here in the most central portion, this is her procerus. And so we want to make sure that we get neurotoxin in uh, this entire muscle complex to relax these uh, 11 lines, as some people like to call them. So for her treatment today, I'm going to do 50 units in this region. So we're going to do 10 units here in this inferior portion of the procerus. We'll do 10 units in each of these points of the corrugator. So that's 50 units total in her frontalis. I'm going to do 30 units and we're going to kind of spread that out. So if you go ahead and lift your forehead up, okay, and you'll see that she doesn't have much movement here at all in the central complex. We'll do 10 units there and then 10 on each side. And if you guys uh, notice, I'm staying pretty high on her forehead. So we're avoiding some of this uh, inferior fibers here because she really does like to have this nice uh, elevation of her lateral brow. And then finally for her lateral canthal ridids, we will go and I'm gonna do 30 units in this full fan pattern. Uh, squint your eyes closed, please. And as you see here, she has pretty much a full fan pattern. Some patients will have only a superior aspect or uh, just in the middle portion, but for her, it's pretty equal. So we'll do 10 units in each of these uh, injection points. Uh, just for your reference, this is her orbital rim. So we are about one centimeter lateral to the orbital rim, and I will inject away from the eye. So for our injections, I'm using a 1cc syringe with a 30 gauge half inch needle. Today, we're gonna be using Dysport. So for these procedures, I do like to use a pinch technique. And so with this technique, I'm using my uh, non-injection -in hand to isolate the procerus here in the central portion. I'm not gonna inject through the marks. I'm gonna just go right below that. One, two, three, okay. This is a uh, fairly deep injection. And for 10 units there, with the dilution that I'm using, that will be 0.05 mLs. So in my practice, I use a 1.5 ml dilution for 300 units of uh, Dysport, and that gives me 10 units per 0.05 mLs of solution. We'll talk about that more in the lecture portion of the class for you guys. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and we'll do 10 units in each of those sites. One, two, three. Okay, these are not as deep as my Procerus injection. Remember, as a safety marker, the corrugator usually ends somewhere along the mid-pupillary line. So with her, we could easily see that delineation. With some patients, you can't see it that easily. And if you can't, you can always have them look straight ahead. And if you look at her mid-pupillary line, that lines up almost perfectly with this line that we had that we could see where her corrugator would stop. For our forehead injection, we're going to change our angle ever so slightly just to keep these superficial. We don't want to hit the bone. If you do, it's not a big deal. One, two, three. It's just not our target area. It won't hurt the patient. Traditionally, we would actually be taught to hit the bone and back up, but it's just not necessary and gives a little bit increased risk of a headache. finish up with our lateral canthal ridus. And so look for any little veins around the eye. This is a very vascular area. And I don't know if you can uh, see this on the camera or not, but there's a tiny little vein that's going right by where I put my marks. I'm just going to go just right below that. One, two, three. Because again, we really just don't want to bruise the patient if we can avoid it. One, two, three. These are very superficial. You'll see the little wheels coming up. Okay. 
Okay. You notice I'm going beside the marks, not right through them. With this white marker, it's not as big of a deal. Some of the darker color markers, you can cause a little bit of tattooing of the patient if you go through a dark ink. So just be aware of that. Minimal bleeding. We don't want to put lots of pressure on these points. Um, for our post-procedure instructions, we're going to tell the patient, it's kind of take it easy.